I haven't talked to my parents in years, but when the SWAT team knocked on my door on that fateful spring morning in California, I kind of figured I owed them a call. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. So, how's it going? Um, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. There's a warrant out for my arrest. Love you? I also need your money. <laughs> the sales pitch didn't go so well. In fact, the conversation ended with my mother reminding me that Martha Stewart went to prison and that she is still well received in society. <laughs> so, if you can't figure it out by now, I'm not very close to my parents. I grew up in a large conservative Mormon family and I had a lot of unresolved resentment and anger with a religion that did not accept my homosexuality. In fact, I had so much loneliness and isolation growing up that I, I befriended a man when I was 13 years old at a mall. He escorted me to a nearby park and raped me in a filthy bathroom stall. Over time, I started to develop a lot of addictions. In fact, every morning in my young adult life, I would take two lines of Coke before I went to work. I worked incredibly efficient throughout the day. <laughs> then instead of the traditional coffee break in the afternoon, I took another bump of Coke. And then to reward me, at the end of a long day at the office, I ceremoniously opened that liquor cabinet. My lifestyle was taxing on my health and my bank account. I also didn't understand the disease of addiction. I was reckless and I couldn't stop. I woke up on St. Patrick's Day to be exact and I am hung the f over to a loud knock at my front door. I peek out the window, and there's a SWAT team. We make eye contact, and the detective on the other side says, Kimball, do you know why we are here? I simply say yes, as I unlock the door. They didn't need to handcuff me. They didn't need to restrain me. I already knew I was busted, and it wasn't just the drugs. The raid lasted hours. They took files, personal items, hard drives. I sat there paralyzed on my living room couch, going through a various scenarios in my head, such as how I'm going to kill myself, and then if I don't kill myself, how the hell am I going to find a good lawyer? Well, with the generous contributions from my parents and my siblings, we hire a kick attorney. He's this handsome, graying man in his 50s, emoting more charisma than a Hollywood actor on the red carpet. I sit in this velvet, plush chair. The door shuts. Now, Kimball, jail is not a good place for a gay. How did he know? I sure didn't tell him. <laughs> we then go through incarceration 101. Hi, I'm Kimball and I'm checking into jail. No, 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 no one checks into jail. It's not the Four Seasons. I also learn how to butch up. We uh, work on how I talk, how I walk. We also strategize how I would uh, ask for protective custody. This way I would not be in large holding cells with other convicts. This way they would not try to make me their bitch. We also strategize on what the, jail, the best jail for me to go to would be. You see, if or when you ever have a, a, a warrant out for your arrest, you can Google all of the jails and prisons in your area and read the Yelp reviews. <laughs> so one of the prisons, the reviews said the phones sucked really bad. And another one said the food was really I found a jail with a 1.5 star review. I chose this facility. So I have my go-to-jail outfit neatly packed next to my front door. 
Um, thanks to Walmart, I bought dad jeans and an Ed Hardy t-shirt with a skull on it. I was badass. They'll never know. The, sir, excuse me, the warrant for my arrest is issued. So how does one go to jail? My iPhone has an app for that. I request an Uber to take me to jail. That poor Uber driver completely, I completely lose it in the back of his black SUV as he pulls into the front entrance to the jail. What have I done? How did I get to this place in my life? This is when I wish I did kill myself. It's time to butch up, just as we practice. I clear my throat, I wipe the snotty tears away from my face, and I go to the front entrance. There's a prison guard standing there, and he profiles me head to toe. Before I can even declare who I am, hi, he escorts me to the visitor's entrance. I guess my Ed Hardy t-shirt didn't work. <laughs> Again, I redirect myself to the plexiglass convict check-in window. And before I get there, the woman is like, excuse me, sir, um, this is not the visitors. And I'm showing her my ID. Just freaking let me in. I have a warrant out for my arrest. Let's get this over with. <laughs> so she looks at her little list and cross-references, and it's true. My name is on that little list. And she turns cold. There's no more eye contact. And she gives me a medical bracelet and says, you are number blank, blank, blank. Memorize it. Not too long passes, and I hear a buzzing sound and a few unlatching locking sounds, and a police officer comes out and handcuffs me to the lobby room chair. So my legs and hands are locked. The TV is on, and all I can do since I'm locked up is watch what's on TV. Judge Judy. The episode is about a tattoo artist who gave a bad tattoo to someone, and there's the person that received the tattoo is suing the artist. I'm incredibly envious of their legal drama. <laughs> the guard comes back out. TV is a privilege, and it's not for inmates. He then escorts me through that back door where he came out from. I keep my head low, eyes to the ground. Other inmates' faces are pressing against their cell block windows. They're whistling at me, catcalling, taunting me. A group of correction officers transform me into a prisoner. They disrobe my street clothes into an orange jumpsuit. I'm given cavity check, thumbprints are taken. This is all very foreign to me. Meanwhile, I should remind you that I'm an addict and I'm starting to withdraw from cocaine. They then put me in solitary confinement so they can monitor me. No clocks, no windows, no faces. Detoxing in jail is an excruciatingly painful experience. Near death, really. Heart palpitations, chills, sweats, hallucinations. Approximately 20 hours later, I'm released. I'm escorted to my new home while awaiting trial. Cell number 36. I had no idea how long someone stays in prison for embezzling $100,000 from their employer to fuel their addictions. <laughs>